This ain't just a toy story or a four in a box These in. are the stories of action, toy, glory, and work clocking S-H, fake you watch, black series are hot toys and figures with transformation sequences that make noise Check out the joints and the many points of articulation We're celebrating the global collector nation Sit back, relax, and get ready to rock this Here's the real chow, welcome to Shelf Conscious Welcome to the very first episode of Shelf Conscious I am your host, Keith Chow It is my pleasure to welcome the very first guest on this podcast because I think he was one of the first guests on my old podcast, Hard Knock Life, when that used to be on YouTube. He is a master of pop culture. We used to work together at Diamond Comics, and he knows more about pop culture than you've forgotten or something. He's forgotten more about (laughs) pop culture than you know. He is the creator of the West Week Ever. Please welcome to Shelf Conscious, Mr. William Bruce West. Hey, how's it going? How you been? Pretty good. Could be a lot worse. <laughs> could be a pandemic. It could yeah, be. yeah, yeah. No, I, I fared pretty well the past year or so. So it's a blessing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's let's keep it that way. Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's wild. Like eight nine years ago, whenever we launched the Nerds of Color, you were one of the. You might have been on that first show we did, like with Jen and James. And yeah. Uh, it, now here we are. We get to you know. It's been eight years. We finally get to talk about the thing. I actually love talking about it. It's not representation. <laughs> Which is important. It's important. <laughs> but no, we're here for the toys. We're here for the toys. We're here we're all about action figures. So full disclosure, like when I talk about my nerd passion, it really, it's not comics. It's not TV. It's not video games. It's six inch plastic figures. And specifically six inch. Like that's my kind of bread and butter when it comes to collecting. But I wanted to ask you, William, what is your, like, what, why do you consider yourself a collector? What's your thing? I just never really grew out of it. You know, (laughs) like, I mean, we all grew up with, uh, even though I'm a child of the 80s, a lot of 80s properties mean nothing to me. Mm. Like, He-Man didn't do it. I think a lot of the problem was those were like afternoon cartoons in like Maryland, and I was in an after-school program, so I got home just in time to see the credits for DuckTales, you know, <laughs> like, that was it, so I didn't, Thundercats means nothing, but G.I. Joe, like, that really, like, that was one of the first franchises that really did it for me, but again, I got in, in the, like, era that a lot of people hate, Like, I love the Deke era when everything is like (laughs) Ninja Force and Star Brigade and all that stuff. So I just, I, I, everybody became a teenager. I got into music and had like limited funds. So then I cycled through hobbies. It was like, this is CD time or this is um, comic book time. But then after college, I really kind of came back to it, especially because I started working. My first job ever was at Toys R Us. Um, mm, wow, you you lived the lived the dream. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was after I graduated from high school, so that first summer after high school, um, worked at Toys R Us, and. I was kind of into it, but like, I was more into like, I really wanted a Razor scooter because that was like when they first came out. I wasn't really into, but like, it kind of got back into me like over the course of that summer. And then I guess like the line that really did it for me that like brought me back as an adult collector would be DC Universe Classics from Mattel. Oh, wow. So like that, that, was much more recent than I anticipated because I had figured like your kind of like reintroduction into toy collecting because that's I mean it's it's crazy it's been like 10 years since DCUC but I would I would assume you would you were going to say like I know you're not a Star Wars guy so that's probably why you didn't say Star Wars but like like something else I didn't DCUC is like you you know you're already in your like late 30s by the time DCUC comes out right like isn't that like just a couple uh, years ago? Late 20s. <laughs> oh, that's right. But, I forget but, I'm a little bit older than you. Yeah, but no, like, there were certain lines. Okay, so even though in high school, like, I kind of got out of toys, I, I've i always been a Power Rangers person. Like, since I remember watching the premiere on what we call Power Rangers Day now and thinking this show will never work. 
this show is terrible. And then I was the one calling every Toys R Us in the tri-state area, like, do you have the toys? Do you have <laughs> So from the moment they were like hard to find up until college, I was a Power Rangers guy. These like, are like the Bandai figures. Yeah, the Bandai about. ones. Like Toys R Us started making it a lot easier where they just started selling these like six packs. Like, so you didn't have to hunt, like, every ranger. Like, around Christmas, there was just, like, the ranger pack. And for, like, 50 bucks, you got, like, all six of them. And I would just buy those. And I'd come home from college, and I'd buy one of those. Um, So I've, I've stuck with Power Rangers. Even, like, when I went through, when I first started thrifting, I was looking for Zords. So, like, I have a whole cabinet that's just Zords that have been compiled through thrifting like complete megazords like i just found a piece here a piece there so power rangers has been like the through line but i think like it was never aimed at adults until like recently Mm -hmm. so like when i could proudly come out as an adult collector was dc universe class (laughs) i see i see what you're saying yeah because i mean just my story right like i i think like for most people our generation at least like you know there was the 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 way the 80s for me like clawed on to you even like you couldn't even escape it you even said like gi joe even though it was like the shittier versions of gi joe later in the 80s like it's still (laughs) it's still grabbed on to you right like that 80s franchise and it and i feel like for so many of like the collectors of our age it is kind of this nostalgia for like 80s and early 90s stuff right like that's what keeps always cycling back i always wonder like kids 30 years from now like are there going to be like Fortnite nostalgia i don't know yeah, Ryan. Ryan's going to be on like the, the, the convention circuit. <laughs> <laughs> All burnout signing off. <laughs> right. So, but so for me, it was the same thing. Like I, I had all the He-Mans, I had all the Thundercats, all the G.I. Joes as a kid, all the Star Wars toys as a kid. And that, you know, you hit that point for me, like it was around high school where your mom says, okay, yard sale. And I'm like, I don't care get rid of all that shit right right you know and that like i wish if 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 i had a time machine i would not go back in time and kill hitler (laughs) if i had a time machine (laughs) i would stop my mom from selling my masters of the universe figures for like a hundred bucks for the whole lot I appreciate that. That's approachable. There's, there's no crazy butterfly effect from that. My life would have been completely different, probably. <laughs> Other than that, I probably would have never gotten married. <laughs> no, but at least I would have my original battle cat. Right, right. Luckily, I never had that that yard sale, that moment. Like, I still have, like, at my mom's house, all the original Joes, like, all the Ghostbusters, the firehouse, like all that stuff. Cause we never, like, I know there will come a time I have to decide what to do with it. But right now I just treat her house like a shed. So like, <laughs> we we haven't had that moment where it's like, all right, you gotta like put up or shut up, you know? Oh, wow. so. I, I envy that. Cause that was definitely, and then, the, but that's the thing too, right? If that moment had come when you were 13, 14, right. what choice would you have made, right? Do you I think you bought- would- 10 more ace of base out <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the, that's the thing like like it was and and i think what gets me the most really is just like you know th- this was the before the times this was before ebay this is before you could like even look up this is before toy fair you can even look up how much toys cost right yep. so it was just like my mom had a box and i literally had like every he-man you know what i'm saying i had castle grayskull I, I think I, I swiped my cousin Snake Mountain because he he gave it up before I did. So I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> and then like I had all that shit. And then and then it was like, you know, I was a snot nosed 14 year old and my mom was like, we're having a yard sale. I was like, I don't care. Right. And like, you know, because my mom had a similar yard sale 10 years later and I was in my early 20s. And by then I had already reintroduced myself to toys. And she was like putting some of these old Batman stuff out on. I was like, no, nope, yeah, <laughs> we're taking that back. <laughs> oh yeah. So. so, so you said '80s stuff was not your bag, but you did like GI Joe, and I mean Turtles. I guess is like '80s. It's on the cusp. Like I was a huge Turtles person. Like if there was a fad, 
I was probably into it. <laughs> like, you know, like Batman the Animated Series, Turtles, um, Ghostbusters, G.I. Joe. I actually own, because when my Toys R Us closed, and they were like demolishing everything. I got the sign from aisle 6D that like hung over that told you what was in the aisle. So it's like G.I. Joe, Ghostbusters, Batman, and like Spider Man. And I was like, if it just had Power Rangers on there, this would be my life. <laughs> you know, like, like it, it ran the whole like gamut of what I've been into. Yeah. That's awesome. So, like, you have, and you still have that display. Oh yeah, it's it's like fifty pounds because I don't know how they hung it up, (laughs) and I I leave it in our laundry room. Like, I don't know what to do with it, but I'm never getting rid of. (laughs) Well, you know, so I I wanted to talk about the reason I brought that up is that like you know those those were the heyday of action figures, right? Like, I I think again that's why so many like thirty and forty year olds when they collect they're they're not collecting like new lines, right? Like it's it's like classic versions of the stuff that you know more adult more mature versions of the shit that they played with as kids right like better articulation better likenesses and and i just wonder like you know again thinking forward like what what would be the toy line that like our kids would go into the store and and see and think you know because when you walk down the target and first of all there's less toy aisles to walk down yeah. but when you walk down the target at walmart toy aisles like half that shit is geared towards us i don't see any like five-year-old tugging on their mom's arm saying give me that like mcfarlane right. heavy metal batman right, <laughs> you know right, like that's right. for me and you that's for four it's kind of like the problem with the comics industry is like catering towards like a dying <laughs> shrinking <laughs> category of people how are we going to get kids into that shit like as much as i hate like titan heroes i feel like well at least you know maybe a five-year-old is going to buy that and ultimately buy toys you know marvel toys in the future you know right a gate i can't stand the titan heroes but like they're a gateway you know like hopefully we hope they are but you're right like what is there i mean i've got an almost three-year-old and i've got a six-year-old the six-year-old is all about roblox like she likes she's like dad she likes having and acquiring she doesn't play with it she just (laughs) snatches it from the three-year-old when like she wants to play with it so like i don't like it really is gonna be like the roblox anniversary tour (laughs) or like again ryan or like diana or all these countless like youtube personalities i've come to know and loathe (laughs) (laughs) they have their own toy lines for some reason (laughs) going back to like your collection you 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 never got rid of them so like you know good for you but when you got reintroduced when you finally could come out as an adult toy collector what was it about dcuc that made you like dive headfirst back into collecting because again that was like after like marvel legends had been around for a while uh like wwe had gone through various versions of figures for a while you know like dc i want to i'll talk about my bones with dcuc in a minute but just tell me about what was it about that line that that appealed to you i like getting in on the ground floor of things um like I was all in on the ultimate Marvel universe because I was like, this is what it was like in 1963. <laughs> you know, so I yeah. was all in. I'm probably like the only person who has like the whole run of that line. And it was the same with like DC UC. I was at Toys R Us when it started. And then there was that first wave. And then the first wave got recalled because of the lead situation in China. And then like, so they were like, we had them in the back but we couldn't sell them so they were just there teasing me every time i went to stock room so the minute that was like lifted i was like okay i'm in this line (laughs) and same with like movie masters which was like around the same time from mattel i said i was gonna be like a completist with that line because i really like the likenesses i huge batman fan um that was gonna do it for me so it, it was being around at the beginnings of these lines. Like I look back at Marvel Legends and I, I can't believe how good we had it. Like a figure, a stand, a comic, <laughs> all for like seven ninety nine. The the only catch was it was in this ridiculous clamshell that you couldn't open. <laughs> Which was 
which was perfect because when you look at what happens now <laughs> with the you couldn't steal it. You can't you can't figure swap back then. Nope. nope. So like I remember when I was at Diamond, in fact, that was the first time I bought Marvel Legends. It was the Modoc wave. And I just happened to be in Toys R Us with when the whole wave was there. And I was like, I've never done a build a figure before. This is kind of cool. So like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, what is this? So like that kind of did it for me, but I still wasn't on the Marvel train until because I felt like too much had passed at that point that was still like wave 11 or something so like when hasbro got the license it was like okay this is a good starting point so i was really into i guess it lines up with the dcucs but i think they predated a little bit where i was really into hasbro's legends from like before there was a build a figure there was that period where they just came with like a stand maybe or you got the mini build a figure like hit monkey or something like that so dcuc was the gateway which then led to marvel legends hasbro and then it just spiraled out of control and now you can't stop yourself i can't stop myself (laughs) you know i I think back to that era like that like late 2000s pre to like because like you said movie masters right i think that was one of the things that i was really like i was even before movie masters there was the the predated dcuc was the dc superheroes yep i was in the i was in the that so yeah and then the batman had its own line right before that too like remember the oh shit what was he called the zip line batman yep man i've got got those guys like so i guess because that's that batman line started in 2003 yeah i had just graduated college so that's my through line is mattel mattel's batman stuff yeah mattel's batman stuff yeah like i remember when zipline came out because i i found uh there was like i used to work at my parents restaurant and we had on the back of checks when we were bored my brother and i would just draw pictures or like you know fantasize about whatever and i remember fantasizing about like a dedicated batman comics line that was six inches you know because this was and this was like in the mid 90s late 90s like that was a no such thing right right everything was five inches everything was five or below no articulation was this weird five and a half that didn't scale (laughs) with anything and i just remember because i don't remember why i wanted six inches at the time because six inches was to your point not a i think maybe like toy biz was the only six inch line back then of the marvel like marvel legends was already around in the late 90s and anyway but i just think what if there was a batman line like that and i remember I, I might still have it somewhere if i find it i'll put it on instagram but like i wrote out like the who the, would be in the way would have batman and robin and commissioner gordon like the, the idea of a commissioner gordon figure in like the mid 90s is right. just like ridiculous right. now we have fucking alfred so right like. right commissioner <laughs> gordon would be the one that like somebody would do like a custom oven custom. wizard or like there would be some like grayed out picture from toy fair that like oh they say commissioner gordon's coming yeah but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. never see it you would never get a commissioner gordon. <laughs> oh, they only sold it in canada <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but when they announced the i think that line was just called batman and then like the zip line batman was the first one with the with the black bat on the gray chest which is my favorite bat yep. uh symbol they just I'll, have no elbow articulation they so don't have it yeah it zero articulation. like <laughs> it's so funny to go but even those like early marvel legends from toy biz like at the time they're like these are amazing and then you look back at them and like holy shit we <laughs> we thought these were cool <laughs> you right. know like like what, they, they don't hold up they're flimsy as fuck you know <laughs> that's what scares me now because like i'm done with dc i won't do the mcfarland stuff but like with marvel if hasbro ever loses the license then like jazzwares or whoever gets it is gonna make stuff that makes this pale in comparison and i'm like i've sunk so much money <laughs> <laughs> well that's how i felt about it because dc you see i was i wasn't a completist with it like i just kind of like cherry picked the characters i liked and, and and but it was a lot like i don't know if you remember seeing some of my facebook albums of like my dcuc collection oh, yeah. but i would you know i would i would have my like villains on one shelf i had my heroes on another shelf now they're all sitting in in boxes because yep. I've, I've replaced them with like other stuff right like i don't have a massive space to display everything so i have to like cycle things in and out right. so i wanted to ask you like you have a massive and, and i don't know i've seen your instagram of just like boxes piled in corners i get like how do you or what is your strategy for display because like i see some of these youtubers and they just have like 
rows and rows and rows of like detolf shelves i'm like i got one detolf shelf and like another shelf you can see behind me right like, and that's the that's the extent of my collection of, that i can display like i said right. i got plastic bins of a whole bunch of crap but like i have to cycle them in and out like how do you decide what gets on display because i remember you had shown on instagram this really cool like mirror box of of power rangers right right yeah i so we got a house three years ago and my wife gave me the basement but like everything i had i had two storage units because like everything was in totes like all the my ranger tote has not been opened in like a decade like what you saw displayed is new merchandise like the classic lightning stuff, it's all the lightning stuff it's right? all the lightning stuff like the classic stuff i'm scared it's yellowed so i was saying schrodinger's tiger zord like i won't <laughs> open it up that's so, the name of this episode by the way <laughs> schrodinger's tiger zord so like she gave me the basement but we emptied out the storage units so everything went down there and it's like it's uninhabitable and i told her i was like oh just give me three months and i'll have it cleaned out and then that was three years ago and then i thought that the pandemic like oh it's gonna give me all this time still looks like a war zone down there but i did display some stuff so I've got most of the legends displayed. I have six Detolf now. Um, the Marvel Legends got out. I have these old gothic kind of things for the Batman stuff, the DC UCs. So that got displayed and that line is like done. So I don't have to touch them except when they fall down. And then I made like a Ranger Nook which you saw on Instagram. So that's pretty much where I am of like Marvel Legends get gets displayed, the Batman stuff gets displayed, and the Rangers. Anything else? It's a crapshoot. Like Jezzo classified, I'm in it with everybody else, but I don't have a display plan or anywhere to put them. So I keep them in the box because I will probably sell them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can make a killing with Jezzo classified, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see. I I don't know if you can see behind me. Like I have all my classifieds up right. Yep. Right there, and I have most of them. I I don't have Beachhead because he's impossible to find. Yeah. And like the cheapest you can find him online is like two fifty. I'm like fuck that. I'm not paying two fifty. Yeah. Beach. I don't even like Beachhead that much. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> you know. Here's the thing. The only reason I want Beachhead, I want his beret, because oh. I want to put his beret on my Killmonger figure and make my Killmonger figure my movie stalker Walter. figure <laughs> because yes. that was my dream. I already have two thirds of my dream. I have Henry Golding and Asian Snake Eyes and Andrew Koji as uh, Storm Shadow. And I'm going to get those movie figures and put Michael B. Jordan in the middle as stalker with a beret. But that's the only reason I want Beachhead. I don't give a shit about Beachhead himself. I just want his beret. My problem is they're making all the niche Joes like the target exclusives so like i really want bazooka there's no way bazooka's mass market was well even the mass market here. joes are impossible to find like oh yeah targets they they for the last six months they've had like gi joe pegs yep and nothing's ever been on those pegs like i even i think the very first image i tweeted from the shelf conscious twitter was like holy shit there's a zartan yep. on the pegs <laughs> that's like that's it rarely seen them on the pegs like the ones i actually own i think i ordered for either amazon or big bad toy store uh that's a please sponsor this podcast <laughs> by the way and and you know i i know people say don't pay scalper prices but i had to for the cobra trooper because i wanted it so bad right that i paid like 80 bucks for it which isn't too bad. Like, it, I mean, it sounds not. stupid to say <laughs> to pay eighty dollars for for a figure, but uh, no, it's not if you really want it. See, I fell into the trap of I laughed when they said six inch jokes. Like, I said that's never gonna sell. There's no market for it. Like, let them have it. And then that's what Target thought too. <laughs> right, right. And then you couldn't find them. So there was one day I was in Target and they had all of Wave One, and I was like. I laughed at people about this, but they're all here and I have to have them. <laughs> they look good. 
and it kills me because it was the week after I found a peg full of beachhead and a peg full of trooper and a peg full of the roadblock. Like I just just in Target one morning, but we didn't know how rare they were gonna be. Oh so no, I, that's 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 <laughs> your my mom sold all my He Man story. Yes, <laughs> yes, they had just opened the case of all three, and like I'm looking online and people are like, oh, I need this beachhead. I gotta find beachhead. So I just grabbed all of wave one and then it was over. Like then I was all in, but I paid like 60 for Firefly. I don't even like Firefly, but I was I was trying to be a completist. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yo, Firefly I actually found in the wild. Firefly and Viper I found in the wild. Like I yeah, it was like literally, you know, we're gonna talk about holy grails in a second, but like I wouldn't say Firefly or Viper was a holy grail, but it was definitely a holy shit moment because oh, oh, <laughs> the, the beauty of the toy hunt, right? Is like you you literally feel like fucking Robert Irwin. It's like, oh, there yeah. it is. <laughs> I mean, there have been there have been a couple times where I got there and there was the line and like they had the case but there's only six in the case and I'm number seven or I'm number eight. Like that happened a lot with Viper. So yeah. I'm one of those people who's like, I'm going to quit this line. And then the next time they announce one, like I went to four targets and a Walmart just before this call looking for major blood. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is major blood not a target exclusive? He is a target exclusive, but Walmart was, I was looking for the WandaVision wave for Marvel oh, right. Legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm I'm all in with Hasbro at this point. Right. Like, <laughs> well, they, they literally own like all of the licenses. They're like everything. the Disney of toys. There's a fan first Friday, and that's like if it's either Rangers, Marvel, or um Joe's. If only you like Star Wars. <laughs> right. <laughs> if only you like Star Wars, you'd be with the Black Series. I mean, I know there there are people who who've said online like they wish hasbro would just buy the dc license because like that's the one thing you know mattel we both love have an affinity for the dc uc figures but i i would i think even as dc uc fans like mattel's distribution when it came to those lines was Ooh. terrible their their qa is not as good as hasbro's Nope. Oh, hey, my, dog, my my cat's making her first appearance on the podcast. She's never made an appearance on other, any other podcast before. Oh, wow. She, <laughs> she's big... got some toys to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but with the Mattel stuff, like, you know, people used to bitch and moan about Mattel, like having the license. But I have, I'm with you. Like when they went over to McFarlane, I bought the first Batman and Superman from the McFarlane waves. And I wasn't impressed. And like they're too big. Like I, I have a few seven inch figures because I have some of the uh, DC Direct stuff. I have some of the NECA figures. Right. But like, you know, they have their own kind of like display. Like my main thing, my main scale is six inch. Yep. Same. And, and I don't, and just, I don't know. There's something about the McFarlane style. Cause I, I was always, people, I know people said like the Fortnite figures are articulated and, but I've always been burned with like McFarlane toys my whole life. And I was yeah, never just statues with joints. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> barely like... having joints too. Right. right. I so, bought yeah. the Thomas the the Flashpoint Batman from Target because it was like their exclusive. And I took it out of the package and I was like, huh. And then I promptly put it on Mercari because <laughs> it did nothing for me. Yeah. And then I bought Batman Beyond because like he doesn't have to mesh with any like regular batman display and i think i'm done I, yeah. i'm not a mcfarlane guy yeah i'm not a Mc, i mean and that's the thing too like i have friends who are like they only they literally collect anything batman and i'm just like wow <laughs> I, I i love batman as much as you do bro but i can't like it's there, it. i draw a line in some places and i can't i just can't get it and i'm not you know i i haven't like full disclosure really read a comic in like 10 years New 52 was like when I was like, I'm done with comics. Really? I'll, I'll dip in and out of some, like I've, I've read most of like Tom King's Batman run. Okay. Um, but like, but for the most, like Rebirth kind of pulled me back in a little bit, but like I was, you know, we're, we're closing in on the 10, anniver 10 year anniversary of, of uh, New 52. And that's when I was like, nope. See, I was I was all in because I'm the because you you like guy. being at the yeah exactly you like being, floor. so I have like but that was the worst ground floor because it's like was. a ground floor where they had all this like 
actually all the things that happened in Batman for the last 80 years still happened, but just in five years. And I was like, right, nope. right. Like, <laughs> that doesn't make I'm, any sense. I can't do this. I was going through a long box last week and I was like, Frankenstein and Shade, <laughs> Aquaman. Like, why do I have this stuff? <laughs> but like, Rebirth was when I got out. So oh, really? I haven't read any, like, but I'm I'm dumb because I still go to the shop every week. So I have the issues, but I haven't read, read the Tom <laughs> King run yet. I haven't read the like James Kenyon run yet, but I have them. I'll yeah. get to them when I run out of figures to buy. <laughs> <laughs> if only like people knew what we do with our disposable income, right? Well, oh. <laughs> like I hope our wives aren't listening to this podcast because <laughs> they're like, wait, you just buy toys and leave them in the corner? Yep. Like, well, yes, my, I do. my wife really got into crafting during the pandemic, like crochet and um, cross stitch and crochet and all this stuff. So like now we have like mutually assured destruction <laughs> where like she goes to the yarn store. I can't ask anything about how much did you spend because there's a pulse box on the porch <laughs> and we just quietly go our separate way. <laughs> Going back to G.I. Joe, speaking of Pulse, did you get their exclusive Snake Eyes ever? I did not. That's because he came out when I was laughing at the line. That's right. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I did not. I, I had everything else. I, I did sell Baroness because the money was too sweet. And I feel like she's going to come back. And oh, yeah, that's away. the other one. I did. I, I paid scalper prices for her because I didn't. It, the one I got didn't come with the coil. And I didn't oh, honestly care about the motorcycle. Yeah, nah. And I, from what I've read, it's not that great. But I really wanted Baroness. Because again, I, I am kind of a completist when it comes to the G.I. Joe line. The only figure I don't have, I don't have Beachhead. I don't have the second roadblock. Because I, I at this point, like unless you're an army builder, I don't need more than one of you. And then the second roadblock didn't even look like roadblock. It looks right, like Black Thought heavy, from the Roots. <laughs> or Heavy Duty. Just call I'll, it Just call him Heavy Duty. duty. Yeah. Because no. I told myself I'm not buying... I, I'm not buying multiples of the same character. Right. Meanwhile, there's Pimp Daddy Des I'm sorry, Profit <laughs> Director Destro downstairs. It's like five have, Cobra Commanders. I have three of the Cobra Commanders. <laughs> so now I'm like, I would probably buy that roadblock if I came across him again. But what? I had rules in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was your mistake when it comes yeah. to the classified line, having right. rules. Because oh, yeah. like, I mean, I was all in for six. Like I said, six inches is my ideal scale. And and I was I was a GI Joe head for the beat. Like I think I've said this. You may know this. You were on the podcast with Larry Hama when we did Hard Knock Life a long time ago. Yeah. Like Snake Eyes, those comics inform me as much as Batman. Like they're almost equal in my like love of pop culture figures. And so when they said GI Joe was coming back in six inch, I was like, holy crap! I'm 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 all in. I bought. I was like the first person to buy the the pre-order the the deluxe snake eyes and i love i'm so happy i did because now talking about crazy aftermarket prices that thing is insane oh yeah uh, do you have the regular one though the, the all yeah. black one i have the all black one i'm waiting for because of my era i want the ski goggles the blue yeah I mean, we basically got that era storm shadow so give me that era snake eyes yeah you know? oh it's storm i don't have storm shadow either i'm waiting i'm waiting for a more traditional storm shadow like the ninja force storm Shadow. he's more you you than me because <laughs> that's when you got me it up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> i was like you're gonna start with the ninja force storm shadow okay i'll wait until we get the traditional one i think the andrew koji one's the only one i'm gonna have for a while because i don't know when they're coming out with a regular storm shadow right and like i bought i pre-ordered movie baroness to fill that hole in my heart but <laughs> i i canceled the pre-order last week when they threw that slew of marvel stuff at us because i was like i'm just saving 22 dollars, but i need to put that towards like this this rescue captain marvel set. where i draw the line because i'm also so we we're talking about like what are the things i collect clearly i do classified i do uh the Marvel Legends I do are just the MCU Marvel Legends. I think you even helped me get a couple a couple years ago. I started as just MCU. And then I was like, okay, MCU and X-Men. Okay, <laughs> MCU and X-Men and Spider-Man. And then from like 
13 to 16, I was a completist. <laughs> and then I was like, then I was like, I can't do this anymore. Right. So now I'm scaling back to like. Just so were you a completist finding... just for the build a figure, or you just like I if it's if it says Marvel Legends, I have to have it. If it said Marvel Legends, I had to have it. But like the build a figure thing is kind of like if you're already getting five of the figures, you might as well get all seven and then figure out the build a figure thing later. Like you right. can always flip it or whatever. But like if it said Marvel Legends, I had to have it. Wow, and that okay. was a dangerous, dangerous <laughs> period of time. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I guess I've, I've always been fortunate in that I've always been a cherry picker. I've never felt the need to buy everything. And as I'm saying that, I realize that's not true. Because the movie masters, I was like that. I literally had to have every movie mask. And the only one I don't have to this day, I don't have is the demon Batman because that Same one here. is just like, I don't, I don't think that actually exists. Right, <laughs> like it's, right, right. it's a myth. Like it's an urban myth, like Batman. It's like the line cyborg says, I didn't think you were real. <laughs> I don't right, think right. he's real. <laughs> I, I feel like I've seen him at like RetroCon or something, but so many years have passed. I couldn't even fathom giving real money for him at this point. <laughs> yeah. Like just, just hand him to me. <laughs> yeah, no. How much are you really getting for this? Like who gives a right. shit about movie masters at this right, point? Right, right, right. Um, but I, but I, I am a Black Series guy because I, unlike you, I do like Star Wars. So like, the, we're similar in that in that Hasbro Pulse owns like four fifths of our souls because unlike you, I don't I'm not into Power Rangers at all. So like right. the Lightning Collection, I can just bypass 100. percent But I'm all in for Black Series. I'm all in for you know Marvel Legends as long as MC. And I'm so far I've I've, I've kept that line very tight. I'm getting to, there's so many MCU figures now though that I'm like oh, like to your point, I pass on the first rescue. But now that we have a rescue with a Gwyneth head, I'm like, hmm, <laughs> See, that one I might need. <laughs> I'm one of those where it's like, uh, got to put this one on Mercari because I got to get the one with the head. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't get the first one in the first place. So it, yeah, it works yeah. out. But yeah, I'm like, that's. so I was going to ask you, like, when it comes, you know, going back to like cycling in and out, like when, when, what is the criteria for you to finally like, part ways with something if you have to? I really, the only child in me keeps me from like getting rid of stuff. Like mm -hmm. I have to have and take and have and have. Um, <laughs> but like getting rid of when I really needed to pare down the legends, especially from that like completest period of time, if I didn't know who they were, they had to go. Cause mm -hmm. you know, there were so many of those where it's like Giganta, that's not even her name. Like <laughs> the, the big, <laughs> I don't even know her name. Like she was in the Hulkbuster wave. Because oh, there's remember. like, like, yeah, somebody's gonna like criticize me for that. That's fine. I, I don't know her name. There were a whole bunch of people. I don't know their names. I don't know who they are. I don't know. Like you never read them. They like, just they were just <laughs> they were just there. Like I kind of did that recently with Frogman, but he looked kind of cool, and I needed the stilt man parts. But like ultimately, if I didn't know who they were, and they were just some like the Serpent Society, I sold all those guys <laughs> because I kept like the main guy because he looked cool. But the rest of them, because they made a lot of serpent society guys um i remember seeing someone with speaking of classified made a copperhead i think it was copperhead into like a serpentor yeah <laughs> yep, that, that would be a good mod too <laughs> but like basically if i don't know who they are they have to go so like the dead toss are kind of like themed like i have an mcu broken up into phases which is really hard to do because like phase one there was nothing yeah like there weren't really <laughs> official legends they had to backfill and then the phase three is its own <laughs> three entire entire detail <laughs> yeah it's 11 damn movies <laughs> and now like i'm trying to figure out what to do with like the non-mcu like the sony stuff or the mm. netflix stuff or and now the, the the disney plus stuff disney plus stuff <laughs> like because i don't have a phase four yet but i hate all the figures i have from phase four. oh what do you mean <laughs> black widow wave was a, was oh, a oh, is, oh that's right that's yeah, right. black widow um oh that's right we're in phase i was like what, yeah, what are you not like i thought oh yeah we're in phase four right now yeah black widow is a bunch of dogs i have not into the shang chi figures the price increase came along so I'm not into them for twenty two forty nine. But only Aquafina's, I thought, 
hiked. I thought the rest of them were 19. It depends on your target. So oh, really? Like the one I found them at at first, they were 22.49. I was like, eh, eh. Wow. But, like, I did buy Aquafina. I ordered her because, you know, Target exclusives are a crapshoot, and I yeah. thought she was going to be rare. No. Nope. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> we're drowning in Aquafina. <laughs> people don't like Aquafina. I learned people don't like Aquafina. What's um, funny is I still haven't seen the trailer. So I saw that figure, and I was like, I don't know if Aquafina's in this movie, but, <laughs> but this is a really good Aquafina figure. <laughs> she is a good Aquafina figure. I, I told myself I was going to pass on the Shang-Chi figures, but then I saw them in the store and there was like, they only had Tony Leung in the, in Shang-Chi, the Mandarin in Shang-Chi. So I was like, oh, well, I, I've always told myself I would buy a Tony Leung figure if I saw one. So I got him. I was like, oh, if I'm going to get Wen Wu, I got to get Shang-Chi. So I got those two. And I was like, oh, Dorkside Toys allows you to buy loose figures without the build a figure because I don't need Mr. Hyde. I don't give a shit about Mr. Hyde. So I was like, well, let me get Death Dealer and Sha Lang. And so I got them off of Dorkside. And again, Dorkside Toys, if you want to sponsor this podcast, please. <laughs> I did not know that about them with no build a figure. That's good. To yeah. Know. So plug for Dorkside Toys. If you go to Dorkside Toys, they have a section where you can go and order like Marvel Legends figures without like loose basically so you get the figure and all of its parts right but no build a figure and sometimes they you know these sell out faster you can just buy the build a figure for like 80 bucks right right that's, so where, I, I'm, that's where i'm at with um with mr hyde because i don't know who he is he's too big for my display but i was already gonna buy like i was like you i thought when i first saw the figures i thought they were just as boring as the eternal like, I did not want them. I was not going to do them, but I needed that hologram Tony. And then all the, then I bought Aquafina. And then I found the sister, which, like, I had never seen her at retail. So I was like, okay, I got to get her. <laughs> so now I just need Shang-Chi and Win Wu. Like, yeah. those are the two I don't have. And yeah, I'm, yeah. like, I'm going to build Mr. Hyde, figure out what to do with him. Yeah. But, like, I'll get if, them on clearance. If, well, if you're, yeah, maybe. Well, definitely Aquafina because 25 yeah. bucks for that figure is crazy. Yeah. Um, but if you ever check out Dorkside, like they will do the, like I said, you can get loose figures. It's, you know, and then you can get just the build of figure. Like I was hoping to get, I wanted to get Sam with his, all his wing parts, just that. Cause I didn't want to buy the whole, cause of the Disney wave, I only really want Wanda right. and Sam. Like, I don't yeah. really need another Winter Soldier. Like, you know, I, I have the one you got for me, like, many years ago. Yeah. And that's fine. And I didn't really need, I, you know, I didn't need another Falcon, but I definitely want Captain America. But uh, but I but I didn't want him without his wings. And it's like, I got to buy all of them to get his wings? Fuck yeah. that. That's crazy. So, but, but then his, the uh, the entire, you know, Sam sold out, like, right away on Dorkside, so you can't get that. But, yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, it's not in the Transformers at all. That's not, you're not, not a Transformers guy. No, I'm, my sentimental story, I have an affinity for Bumblebee mm -hmm. because Bumblebee was the last gift like I got for Christmas from my dad and he passed away like three months later, like mm. when I was three. So like I will collect or do, even though I still haven't watched the movie. Great <laughs> but movie. Like, but like I will collect any like vintage Bumblebee, that kind of thing, but yeah, Transformers, it falls into that, like, 80s He-Man, Thundercats. Like, it just doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't get to talk about Turtles too much. I guess, are you into, like, I know that was a big thing for you back in the day. My The thing the, for me about Turtles, like, I never collect, my, my little brother did, and he's not nostalgic like I am. So, like, we, we never revisited Turtles. But the thing that I don't, like, my guess, like, toy collecting blind spot when it comes to Turtles, like, I don't know what, is the difference between the playmate stuff the NECA stuff the super set like how how does one brand have like five licenses all making it's, the same size figures basically it's crazy because playmate spent the better part of like 30 years not letting anybody touch that license you know <laughs> like it was like this is ours this keeps the lights on go away and then all of a sudden like anybody can make turtle stuff now so like to me, it's price. Like Super 7's $50, NECA, a two-pack is $60, and Playmates, 
they do whatever whenever they feel like right <laughs> but i i don't do the current turtle stuff because it's just as hard to find like first off it doesn't really interest me i am not a NECA guy i the qc issues they cost too much for their issues so like that fan base is having just as much fr- trouble finding their product as I am finding mine. So I don't need to add another stressor, <laughs> you know, like lightning collection. It's hard to find because a store gets a case. There's only like one double in the case It's just as bad as classified as bad as legends. So I have three stressful toy lines. <laughs> I just don't need another one. You know, and so I, I want, I don't, I don't want to, get off before we dive into this because i should acknowledge that both you and i worked in nerd distribution industries and the thing that like trips me out is why is toy distribution so damn difficult in the 21st century because like i remember back in the day you would walk down maybe because there were toys or us's and they, they were actual places that cared about having toys but like even in the, you know, whatever stores predated Target and Walmart in the 80s for like us in the East Coast, because those weren't around on the East Coast, at least. Like the toy aisle had pegs full of figures that you wanted, right? Maybe not all of them, but there was definitely like, I don't remember like, oh, I can't find trap jaw when I was right, five right. years old, right? Like if I wanted a trap jaw, the problem was like, convincing my parents to get me it, you know? Right, right. But like today you literally like walk down an aisle in target and it's empty. Like there's not a figure anywhere. And it's not, it can't just be scalpers waiting at eight o'clock in the morning, right? Like there's gotta be something at the root cause of the distribution that makes it so damn hard to buy toys at a store. What do you think it is? I always felt it was the scale because the, like you're basically putting less product in the same amount of space. Like when you go back to like three point three and three quarter Joes, like a case could hold maybe like two full runs of the of the wave, while like that same box is one run of a six inch, you know? And it's like they're occupying the same space. And since toys have gotten bigger, it's the same way that like stores claim that they don't have the shelf space for like play sets anymore. But you go to like a Toys R Us and here's Castle Grayskull, here's the G.I. Joe General, here's like the sewer play set, that kind of deal. So I like in my heart, I blame the scale because there is that issue of like, I've seen what Marvel Legends come in, like, and because of the size of the packaging and the size of the toy, you get like an eight figure case where if you were dealing with three and three quarter Joes, that could have been like 16 figures right there, you know? So like, that's what I say. But then there is the like backroom stuff of the scalpers, the people who work there. Like I'm, everybody has this conspiracy of like, oh, the target employees are like hoarding the stuff. But I mean, I worked at Toys R Us. I bought stuff off the truck. Like there are things I have that I've never seen in store. We were talking about the, those Batman figures from Mattel. There's that wave that's like the black suit Catwoman, um, the Two-Face, it, like the whole wave yeah just, that is like the last dc superheroes wave like those are those are the first ones i think i actually went on ebay and bought at like scalper prices because i paid like 70 bucks for the the black bat batman with the with the utility belt and then yeah. the black suit catwoman and the and the two like yeah i i, I, I paid the, scalper prices for those <laughs> i unloaded the truck i said oh I put it aside. <laughs> so you're saying the conspiracy is true. Conspiracy there are people like you behind the. There are no perks to those jobs except for like being there when the stuff hits. So like I don't really fault them. I I mean it it's I, I guess it comes down to like I'm also a reseller at times. I'm not a scalper. Like I won't go in and buy like a case of stuff. But if there's like two of something, I'll see if like a friend of mine needs it or see if I can trade it for something or something like that, you know? So I understand the mechanics going on. What do you think is a greater sin in the toy collecting business? Well, not business, the hobby. Is it is it figure swappers or figure scalpers? Ooh. Because let me, let me make the case, and I may get hated 
in the toy collecting business for saying this. I actually feel like toy swapping is a morally is morally superior to toy scalping. And here's why. When you swap a figure, the only thing you're hurting is the company because no one's buying it. Right. You're hurting Hasbro. You're hurting Mattel. You're hurting Target. Actually hurting Walmart because Walmart's the one they don't give a shit. (laughs) Every Walmart I've been to is like it's not even they don't even figure swap. There's like empty packages (laughs) in the Walmart. But it's it's kind of like it's kind of like the uh, the thinking behind like shoplifting is like it's really you're 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 you know you're doing it to survive and and really the the company's insurance is going to take care of it right. But when you're scalping, you're you're taking a product that could be bought at retail, and you're selling that for like, you know, inorbitant prices. Oh yeah. You're hoping desperate people will pay you like four times. It's like Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. It's like I, NFTs. <laughs> I, I'm definitely with you there. I think scalping is worse because like this might get me some hate. <laughs> I kind of think that swapping is an art form now. <laughs> like there's some, there have been some swaps where I'm like, touche. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, so I, I, like swappers are like Banksy to me at this yeah. point. <laughs> Okay, you, you got here before I did, and that was pretty convincing. Like today, today I found the death metal Batman with the guitar, and it had this weird thing in the package that I thought was a stand for the guitar. No, they had swapped out the legs for the like Dark Father figure or whatever you call it, and just put these like constructs looking things <laughs> into the package but it was so convincing i was like wow that's a really like ornate stand for that guitar. <laughs> like i <laughs> might get that i right. might buy that and not right. even know the difference like that was a good swap Two you know and, then again, and you're not and you're not if you buy if you ended up buying that you're not spending like 90 extra dollars to get it as if you were to buy that you know on ebay or whatever so right. i don't know i mean both are wrong you shouldn't do it but I feel like there's a moral gray area when it comes to figure swapping where like people who who like to your point show up at Target at 7.59 get all of the you know G.I. Joe classifieds that come out and then flip them for like a hundred bucks each. No, the worst Those guys part, to hell. the worst part is they you forgot a step. You gotta post it to the gram. <laughs> <laughs> because there's one guy who, like, I'm sure you've seen it. He's on vacation right now. He bought, I wanna say like 15 bloods. And he took a picture on the balcony of his like resort. So he's like, oh, love being on vacation. And there's like palm trees in the background. And he's got rows of major blood. And everybody wants to murder him, right? Yeah, (laughs) screw that guy. Uh, Last thing I want to ask you, uh, Will, is, you know, everyone has their like white whale, their holy grail, the one figure or play set or vehicle that got away. And so the way I want to frame the question is, you know, because everyone's like, oh, it's the USS flag, right? Like, realistically, right, right. like, that's no one, no one got that. Like, the one kid on your street who got that was, like, the, the rich kid who, like, didn't even care that he got it, right? Nope, like he, nope. he wanted a pony and got the USS flag instead. He later OD'd in college. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what is the, what is the realistic white whale that, that you always wanted but never got? Or maybe, you know, when you turn 30... Like I I don't care I'll pay five hundred dollars for that one thing that I that escaped me when I was a child. But what would that white whale be? Well, I don't have a lot of like I guess because of being an only child and like begging and all this stuff. I got most of what I wanted. Like I got like the firehouse and the GI Joe General and all that stuff. Like I guess the thing I've kept an eye on recently. So it's kind of like a modern thing, but I guess it's like my white whale. And some people are going to like laugh at this when you hear about like what it is. But I want the Marvel Legends Netflix subway set because it's the only way to get Iron Fist and Colleen Wing. And like because I, I was like the MCU completist and they're not. The Netflix shows are MCU adjacent. Yeah, ish. So like, I, yeah, ish. So like, yeah, I Kenya could, Barra should have created them so they could just call them MCU ish. <laughs> right, right, right. So it's like I can sleep at night not having them, but like I have alerts set up everywhere, and it's currently it goes for about like four hundred right now. Wow, so, really? Yeah, yeah. 
because like you have the unmasked daredevil you have like different wardrobe jessica jones and luke cage and then you end up with the colleen and danny figures that you can't get anywhere else like those figures come up on their own for like danny usually goes for like 120 colleen goes for about 150 really so like yeah so that set is kind of like my that's my current modern day grail that's what i've got my like feelers out for right wow. now well i bought colleen i don't remember paying that much for when i bought her though because i bought her loose yeah because i needed to have you know i needed to have the defenders so i had jessica jones i had luke cage and i had daredevil all the like traditional marvel legends ones and i needed an iron fist so i got colleen and uh <laughs> that's all i need i didn't need anyone else and i already had you know rosario dawson so i like i had i had for a while i had my netflix display and i was like look i have the entire defenders and people were like aren't you miss are you no i got all four of them there's luke cage there's daredevil there's jessica jones and there's iron fist he's played by john cena you can't see him (laughs) you can't see him can't see him and uh no but i don't remember paying like i definitely didn't pay triple digits for colleen wing so that must have been like before that set was like crazy so yeah but well, what, I, what, what's your grail oh man um i think it's a couple things like to your point like there's the, the the toy that got away when i was a kid was um i don't remember what company made it but the there was a night rider car that came with a michael uh david Terror. hasselhoff Kenner right? was, it, was that Kenner yeah and I wanted it so bad like my dad tells a story to this day where like I had a conniption in the middle of the store and like they didn't buy it for me <laughs> right, <laughs> and, right, right. and they never did and and I don't you know I actually don't really like trawl like uh, uh eBay for it but if, if I ever saw it at like a thrift store at a at a, at a convention I might buy, buy it solely because like it just it's the one thing like to your point i was an only child for seven years and i had a little brother right right. but but for those seven years like for the most part i got everything i wanted like you know i had literally the entire master of the universe collection there was like I, we took a trip to hong kong one year and my all my uncles and aunts like spoiled the hell out of me so like we, every time we'd go to the toys r us i was like i want that one and that one and that one and that right. one like they had to buy another suitcase to bring home all the extra he-man figures i, I got in <laughs> hong kong and these were like fresh out like the factory because it was Hong right, Kong, you know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> so there was that. Um, so that's the like the white whale from my childhood that that I definitely, you know, will always think about buying. And, like, but the modern thing, like the one thing that's like, oh, it's so hard to find. I mean, it, it's it's easy. It's like the G.I. Joe shit. It's like just it's not so much that I, that I would buy. Like, I would just be happy to see them on shelves. Right. because i just like they're so good like to you to your point i wasn't that one well, no, that's not true i was very excited when they announced classified but i thought the same thing who is it for right you know right. like the movies you know not coming out for a while when they were announced like snake eyes was a while and like you know people are they're definitely for people our age but like no one younger than us even knows what gi joe is or cares right right but then they looked so good um that i had to even despite all like the future guns and like the weird armor like they're such good toys i know you've never opened any of them (laughs) but they're really really good toys and the 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 snake eyes is my this is my favorite toy like of the last like decade it's like the 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 deluxe one really because that one comes with the uzi the one you have has the weird gun uh yeah but the, the deluxe the one gun. <laughs> has the actual uzi and that's like the only way you can get them with an uzi and it's like it's not snake eyes without an uzi right right so yeah. I, I wish i'd done this from my office i'm in like my bedroom right now <laughs> i have that night rider car <gasps> with michael with michael with the box does it, it was... still talk <laughs> after 40 yeah. years really it, it had to like i got it on it was a it was an ebay purchase at this point, probably about seven years, I got it before our first daughter was born. And like, it was a lot. It was, it was more, but it was like, probably like, worth it. It, it was worth it because it had the box. 
and like well, I put the battery in and it had to like recharge. It was like oh, activate turbo boost. <laughs> but then eventually it like caught up. I haven't tested it lately, but I do have that with the Michael oh, Knight. Nice. Yeah, well, so I because I, I was in the same I was in the same boat. That that was one I always wanted. I had every other like bootleg night rider thing because I was a huge night rider person. Mm-hmm. I owned the series on like three different DVD sets. <laughs> like I was a huge I have the power wheels in my mom's shed. <laughs> so I had to have that. Yeah, well that's awesome. I did not know that about we've known each other for a long time, yes, and I yes. did not know that you had the the Knight Rider oh, with yeah. Michael. That's the with thing. Michael. Cause like, I think there were two versions of it, right? Like there was just like the regular car. And then there was the one that came with Michael that talked. Yep. And that's the one I wanted. That's, I mean, I had it in my hand. I put it in my mom's cart and my dad was like, $20, that's too expensive. <laughs> No, because that was too expensive right, back right, in like right. 1984. Or like, whatever. but no, you have to see the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, if I had a time machine, I would stop myself from the yard sale and I would uh, give my give my dad a twenty spot to buy me the Night Rider. I love how you use your time machine like Stewie Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> All just self gain. Yeah. yeah. Screw bettering the world. I would have a Knight Rider on my display at this point. Well, well, I mean, we could probably do this for another hour. And in fact, you know, please come back. If, if I can't book any other guests, I might just have you on every week. I'll be your Al Roker. <laughs> <laughs> you can be my, yeah, exactly. Just laugh it on my joke. Uh, how can people find you on the internet to, to see some of your pop culture? musings um can find me on twitter at william b west or instagram where i pretty much just post toys at this point um at william bruce west and my website william bruce west.com all right well you can find me on twitter at the real child the underscore real underscore child and follow this podcast shelf conscious at shelf c-o-n-n-o-c shelf con n-o-c Follow the Nerds of Color at the Nerds of Color and go to hardknockmedia.com to find all this stuff. Please hit that subscribe button down below and uh, tell all your friends about this. If you love collecting toys, this is the show for you. And uh, until next time, we always come collect.